Shark Bravo Hybrid Electrostatic Headphones Review The price of a pair of headphones is usually dictated by various factors, including the brand, the engineering and design, the sonic tuning, and more importantly, the type of driver that powers them. While most affordable or mid-range headphones use dynamic drivers, more expensive options feature more capable technologies such as balanced armature, planar magnetic and electrostatic. The last of those usually drives the price of headphones into the range of lakhs of rupees. This is what makes today's review product even more special. A small company by the name of Shark has designed its Bravo headphones with electrostatic drivers, and has priced them at the surprisingly low price of $249, approximately Rs. 16,700. This would make the Shark Bravo headphones the most affordable electrostatic pair we've seen and a great option for buyers who want a premium sound without spending too much money. Find out all about the Shark Bravo headphones in our review. The first thing worth saying about the Shark Bravo headphones is that the sound isn't entirely electrostatically driven. These are hybrid driver headphones, with one 4030E stat electrostatic and one 40mm dome type dynamic driver in each ear casing. The lower half of the frequency range is handled by the dynamic drivers while the upper end is taken care of by the electrostatic ones. The headphones have a frequency response range of 6 to 45,000 Hz, sensitivity peak level of 118 dB and weight of 294 grams. The hybrid driver technology here has been designed by Taiwan-based Verisonics, which sells its own in 500 headphones for $549, approximately Rs. 36,700, more than twice the price of the Shark Bravo. Another noteworthy aspect of the Shark Bravo is that despite the fact that electrostatic drivers need a lot of power to be driven, these headphones don't need additional amplification and have an characteristically low impedance rating of 32 ohms. While external amplification does of course impact the sound positively, there's nothing preventing you from simply plugging these headphones into your smartphone or computer and using them comfortably. This is made possible partly by good engineering and partly by the fact that the low-power dynamic drivers are doing half of the work. Of course, the fact that you're getting all of this technology and high-end components at such a low price means that there has to be a trade-off. The Shark Bravo's design can politely be termed as eccentric, but more realistically considered just plain weird. The biggest complaint we have is the liberal use of weak, poorly finished plastic on everything from the ear casings to the headband. Although the inner frame of the headband is metal, the top is surrounded by a leather-like cover and soft padding on the underside. There are also strange leather straps at the points where the headband attaches to the ear casings, and an exposed cable that connects the two casings themselves. All of it comes together to look tacky and cheap, to say the least. The main cable of the headphones is a standard rubber-coated affair with no inline remote or microphone. It's fairly durable but also quite tangle-prone. While typical electrostatic headphones use a 6.3mm plug and dedicated amplification, the Shark Bravo headphones feature the popular 3.5mm connector and can easily be driven by most portable devices and computers. The Bravo is comfortable to use, primarily because of good ear cup padding and a proper around ear fit. Apart from a bit of heat, there was nothing preventing us from wearing the headphones for long stretches. We tested the Shark Bravo headphones with our OnePlus 3, review along with a Windows PC with a Cord Mojo DAC. Focus tracks for the review were Gaudier's State of the Art, Roy Soap's Remind Me, and Leon Vine Hollow's Butterflies. Kicking things off with State of the Art, we immediately noticed a sonic signature that is typical of hybrid headphones, where there is a distinct sense of separation because different drivers are powering different frequency ranges. The low end, delivered by the dynamic drivers, is powerful and full of attack. However, since the electrostatic drivers handle frequencies in the upper half, the lows aren't overpowering at all. The mids and highs feel as strong and defined as the sub-bass. On the whole, frequency response is uniform across the range and the sound feels powerful and well-defined. With Remind Me, the qualities of the electrostatic drivers were better highlighted. The sound is clean, supremely well-defined and incredibly balanced. Tonal quality is excellent with the Bravo headset presenting sound with admirable crispness and sharpness. Additionally, sonic separation is fantastic as well, allowing you to perceive individual elements without losing track of others. All of this is predominantly audible within the upper range of frequencies, and is certainly helped by the headset's ability to achieve a frequency response of up to 45,000 Hz. Moving on to the Deep House track Butterflies, we found that the sound felt a bit closed and lacking in width. 
The soundstage isn't quite as wide as we would have liked, with the focus of the Bravo being on tone and attack rather than openness. This does make the headphones sound a bit canned, and the sound doesn't progress far beyond the point of decent stereo separation.